Welcome to the world of technology. Uh, are there any additions to the agenda as presented? Moved by Councillor Stoyles, seconded by Councillor Lane. All those in favor, country minded, the agenda is accepted as presented. Moving on, first thing will be the minutes of our public meeting of January 25th. Accept the motion on the minutes. Moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Councillor Aker. Are there any errors or omissions? Hearing none, call the question. All in favor, country minded, motion carried. Business arising then from the minutes of January 25th. Anybody? Paula Tessier. Uh, it was brought up last uh, our last public council meeting, and I think it's important that we bring it up again. And that's item uh, 031, which is household garbage and, and putting out of garbage uh, the night before your garbage collection day. Uh, today, driving around, I noticed uh, that a lot of garbage was still out. So we're ha I think we have two issues. We have people that are either putting their garbage out too late, and as a result, they miss the uh, they miss the garbage truck, or they're putting it out the night before. And the concern that I have with putting it out the night before now, especially, I mean, in the summer, we have to be worried about tear-ups and debris, but right now we have to worry about snowfall and we have to worry about street widening, which is becoming, you know, our, our snow crews are doing an excellent job keeping our streets clear and wide, but if there's garbage bags coming down a street, Where well, did you see it out today? I saw it out today on Michener Avenue this afternoon. Uh, it was probably around 4 o'clock, but 3, uh, well, yep. it's out. It's out today. Well, if that's the case, then it's out now because it's on Michener right. Avenue. And I also noticed uh, last night, of course, you know, in my neighborhood as well, garbage is going out the night before. If the street widener, if the snowblower has to come down, you know, if it sucks in that bag of garbage, again, what a tremendous mess it's going to make. Um, or it's going to have to just bypass it. And that is unfair to everybody who has to use the street as well. So I think we really, you know, have to send out a strong reminder to our residents. Well, we are, uh, we do have municipal enforcement patrolling the garbage collection routes now, right, to make sure that uh, garbage is not out. They're asked to do that. I understand yeah. that's happening. Yeah, it's right? just, it's just, it's not, I yeah. guess it's not going to catch just, them all, I guess, if they no, want the to deliberately break like, the rule. Yeah, but. the message is still not getting out there. So mm -hmm. I guess that's my concern. When you're driving, you see it, and you're concerned about, especially if the snowblower comes by now. It's mm -hmm. going to be a tremendous mess, and everybody pays for that. Here, here. Okay, that's uh, any, anybody with anything to add? Any other business arising? Business arising. Councillor Lane. Well, I'm going to call it business arising. It's actually. Uh, errors or, or is actually an omission and uh, I never raised it because um, thanks to technology I lost all my notes so I had to uh, read everything again to figure out what where my notes were. You want to give me the number? Anyway 046 and uh, under the discussion piece there uh, this was the transition areas on Topsail Road and the notes here basically talk about the issue of council purchasing property in transition areas um, uh, and so on and uh, while that is certainly one option uh, I don't want the issue lost uh, on that um, item alone because we all know that uh, to do that to, to land bank if you will there is um, a cost to that and um, you know it may be okay for uh, large cities across the country that have the financial wherewithal to do it we realize that we uh, do have some challenges in that regard so uh, I, I wanted to again just reiterate that while that is maybe an option in some cases uh, that um, another thing that we should be looking at in these transition areas are things like the development regulations we have minimum uh, frontages for example uh, established uh, which I th I'm not sure what the number is but there is a minimum frontage uh, maybe you want to look 100, at it what's 100, that? 100 feet 100 feet so maybe we would want to uh, increase that, for argument's sake, from 100 feet to 150 or 200 feet, whatever. Maybe we want, we may want to look at um, things we can do in the regulation in terms of, um, you know, if we have areas in the city like these transition areas where uh, we want to see certain types of development, maybe we could be working with developers to come up with other ideas, whether it be uh, incentives for doing so uh, in terms of building permits and fees, uh, maybe increasing uh, heights, densities, um, you know, some tax breaks, whatever the case might be, um, I think it has been more inclusive than simply land banking. And again, I raise that because we do have a number of areas in the city along Topsail Road, Commonwealth Avenue, and so on, that are in transition. And I, you know, I still believe that, um, you know, unfortunately, uh, we've lost some opportunities, like along Park Avenue and so on, where somebody may have turned a 
residential property into a commercial one and hence uh, in doing so really uh, messed up for all time the opportunity to take a larger section of property in terms of four or five houses for example and making a, a proper development there so um, I, I just wanted to point that out that it's not just about land banking and I would like it to go to committee thank all you right, yep okay thank you very much any other question or comment any other business arising any other business arising all right, hearing none, we'll move on. We, we have no proclamations today, no correspondence to review. Our first committee is Public Works. Councillor Tessier, if you would. Okay, thank you. It is moved by Councillor Tessa. You're seconded by Councillor Walsh. Question, uh, a question, Councillor Lane. Yes, Your Worship. Just wondering, uh, as it relates to that policy, um, right now, if we should uh, if we should seize an animal, and the owners come and they pick up that animal, mm -hmm. uh, are we automatically then licensing that animal? We are not. Which if is, we are not licensing my question that, too. yeah, if we are not licensing that animal, I would like to. Uh, I don't know if I can move a friendly amendment here or if it has to be referred back to committee, but I think that that is the uh, opportunity right there and then, once we have the animal, to actually license it. You charge the fee for it, whatever it is, and license it at that point in time. But our Second. fee is $10. Whatever it is. I'm going to ask that we not do that uh, at, this, at this moment. Uh, I'm, I'm going to uh, suggest or recommend to you that we uh, we refer it back to committee. That's fine. Only Either because uh, I think there there would be support for the amendment, but we need to know where it goes and what yes. particular number That's might fine. have to be adjusted or so on. Yes, uh, but I would agree that we pass this as it is, uh, but make note in the minutes that we really want to look at having these animals, once they are uh, returned to their owners, licensed before they they are returned. Oh. And that leaves a lot of trust in the animal. Most owners have a tag anyway, even if they're not licensed. It's yeah. a small minority that are licensed. Yeah. Oh, yeah, there's way too okay. few. There's way too few. Yeah. Councillor Stoyles. I have a question, Your Worship. I'm just wondering now. So, are we going to be offering residents of Mount Pearl that if they had their animal picked up and they're assuming that we picked it up in the daytime and they get home from work at 5 o'clock and their animal had gotten out by one of the children? You know, early in the early afternoon, and they got home five o'clock after we were closed. Would we then send somebody in to let them pick up their animal? Is is that going to be part of this solution as well? Because some of the complaints I have heard over the past number of years is, you know, the children get home from whatever, you know, they're in sports or whatever, and you know, they're 12 and 13, they have their own key, and they get in to let their animal out they get home from work 4.30, 5 o'clock, and they can't get into the city until the next day, and they got to take the morning off of work, and blah, 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 they pick up their animal. If we had picked up their animal, or they're out all night looking for it and don't know where it's at, that we have it. And so is there any avenue for someone to find out, first of all, if we have their animal, and if then they can go in and pick the animal up?
What would be the difference? What would be the difference if you had my dog and and I find out at six o'clock you picked it up at two and now I want to I want I just want to go get my dog. I don't want to leave it up in the pound overnight. What? It goes to the safety of the animal. Why we're going to go do a pickup? So so if somebody has a dog or there's a dog in your yard and you're concerned, call us. We will go pick the dog up because we're concerned for your family and we're concerned for the animal. So we're going to spend the extra cost to bring the animal back to the pound. Once the animal's back to the pound, the animal's safe. This is a, I'm going to say, a different, what Councilor Stoyle's bringing up is a different, it's a different issue. It's more of a comfort thing, not to do with the safety of the animal. So we're spending the extra cost to ensure public safety and animal safety, but not necessarily, I'm going to say, uh, more flexibility for people uh, to pick up their animals. That it's more aimed towards public safety and animal safety. Uh, so we don't do it now. We don't. Do no, it now. we don't do it now. So if you call them now, what happens? We'll confirm hours. we have your. We'll confirm we have your dog. Come get him in the morning. We won't even confirm because we don't know it's your dog. He doesn't. You got to come in the morning. We describe your dog because most of them don't have tags on them. If they have a tag, chances are that somebody. The situation we're speaking of is usually a situation where a homeowner says, "I have a dog. I picked him up on my street. Did you come and get him?" So we then come and get that pet, bring him back to the depot. Or the other ones have been, I have a dog in my backyard and my children are afraid it's not my dog. Would you please <coughs> get the dog? Those are the situations that this new rule applies to. Okay, got you. Got you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I'll call it. All those in favor? Okay. Contrary minded, motion is carried. Next item, your worship, is a tender for four by four pickups. Uh, tenders were called for the supply and the delivery of two of these trucks with bids received from the suppliers that are listed. And we're recommending that the tender be awarded to the lowest qualified bidder, which is Hickman Dodge, for the tender price of $54,973.37, tax included. And I so move. Moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion carried. And another tender for a UTM backhoe. Again, tenders were called for the supply and the delivery of this backhoe with, receipt, with bids received from the suppliers that are listed. And we're recommending that the tender be awarded to the lowest qualified bidder, which is Case Atlantic, for the tender price of $118,922.33, with taxes included, and I so move. I find that the cost of equipment is like a backup. It's amazing, 118, isn't it? 118000 a garbage truck, a quarter of a million bucks. Now. It's <laughs> unreal. All right, call the question. All those in favor? A question, Your Worship. Oh, a question yep. to, the, to the motion? Yeah, um, very quickly. Uh, this backhoe, we committed as a council, uh, as we all know, uh, as relates to the, um, the Jessica campaign, that all new equipment would be fitted with uh, underguard, uh, side guard protection. Yep. Is this backhoe fitted with underguard protection? Uh, no, it's not, but you can't outfit a backhoe with side guard protection if you want that. Trucks. Just trucks. Yeah, it's Tandem just axle trucks. trucks, not backhoes. Tandem axle Only trucks. trucks, yeah. Only trucks. Snow plows. You can't, you can't do it on a backhoe. Can't do it with that, no. Go to call the question. All those in favor? Yeah. Contrary minded. Motion carried. That's it. We are moving on to Community Services Committee. Councillor Walsh. Thank you very much, Your Worship. Uh, we just uh, came through uh, the uh, Hall of Fame and Athlete of the Year uh, banquet, and uh, we're already preparing uh, for uh, our May uh, Focus on Youth Awards. This is a pretty big deal, obviously, in terms of the night. It's a gala event. It uh, will be hosted by last year's winners, which is what we always do, Brian Peach and Lindsay Collins, two excellent winners. Uh, they will host it. It's usually done with a great mixture of comedy and entertainment. This year, the entertainment will be provided by the Montreal Show Choir uh, and some of the people who are the finalists for the uh, various performing arts awards. Um, I want to just put a word out there as well that, particularly for the schools, with all the youth organizations, individuals and groups as well, that the deadline for nominations is the 1st of March. Uh, that's not going to be long uh, approaching, just a, you know, a few weeks' time. So. Uh, it takes a, a bit of work. Uh, I've done many hundreds of these actually uh, during my uh, time uh, as a principal, and uh, many of the groups that you know come through for these various awards funnel down to the various departments, teams, and you know the performing arts uh, section, the music uh, programs, and that sort of thing. It takes a little bit of time to get them ready if you're going to do them properly. So uh, get the word out there that uh, you know the, the deadline is fast approaching for the first of March, and we'd like again to have. So many people, so many young people in our community are so deserving of being acknowledged, and it really is about the acknowledgement. Mm -hmm. Although we do declare winners, it's it's really an opportunity to acknowledge uh, the people who do such great work. 
here, here. Working with our youth and also the youth themselves in different areas. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, second thing, um, that's just for information purposes uh, only, Your Worship. The second thing does require a motion. Uh, and this is uh, an allocation of the $52,000 uh, of the first installment of the grant to the MOU uh, for the sport of <coughs> um, While I'm asking for the motion, uh, of course, this operates their, the uh, office, uh, the administration, staff, these uh, sorts of things, and provides uh, the programming uh, that the alliance uh, you know, provides to the various stakeholders as well. Uh, we are, by the way, in, in the midst of identifying a, a Saturday uh, to have that uh, further planning session with the Alliance. I've been in touch with uh, the Vice Chair uh, in the lab, the incoming Chair, but the currently Vice Chair uh, over the last few days uh, to do that, that as well. And my mic wasn't on. I probably never picked up any of that, but that's okay. Um, the, uh, so that's happening with the Sport Alliance. So right now, all I'd like to ask uh, for the support of Council is for the allocation of the $52,000 in funds and ISA moves. Moved by Councillor Wall, seconded by Councillor Lane. Question or comment? All those in favor, contrary minded, motion carried. Last thing for me, Your Worship, um, will be uh, to just pay uh, mention of the fact that our Marlins uh, swim team had an outstanding meet uh, in the middle of January. It was the first meet uh, for the province, really, uh, in 2011. Uh, the team was uh, awarded the top team based on the FINA point system, which is the point system that they use for qualifying, personal bests, all of those sorts of things. I'm just going to highlight, uh, take 30 seconds to do it. Uh, Becky Dyer, Leslie Marie Lahey, and Darcy Tucker uh, were gold, silver, and bronze winners in the 15 and over female category. In the male 15 and over, Ryan Adams won gold, Gavin Dyke silver. The 13, 14 age group, uh, Caitlin Denine won gold. And the 13, 14 female, uh, Liam Cadigan uh, was gold. La uh, sorry, Isaac Lawley was bronze. And finally, the uh, 10 and under female, uh, Emma Holden Gold and Hannah Lewis Silver. A great overall showing, a lot of personal bests, and of course, top team is a big deal for them and a great start for the 2011 year. And I just wanted to acknowledge their achie achievements here, uh, here. as they come out of the gate for 2011. That's Thank it you, for sir. me, Your Worship. Thank you Thank very you, much. Thank you, sir, very much. Moving on, Corporate Services Committee, Councilor Lane, floor is yours. We're making great time here. We are. We are now. We were. <laughs> Um, first item of your worship, uh, we have a we request. Were, yeah. yeah, we were. Uh, we have a request for tax consideration, um, and we are uh, we are uh, moving. I'll move that we're going to waive business tax for Campia Gymnastics and the School Milk Foundation, and that's per uh, council's policy for nonprofit organizations. I so move. Moved, uh, seconded by Councillor Tessier. Question or comment? No inquiries. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Next, Your uh, uh, Worship, we have um, three uh, businesses or former businesses, I guess, listed there uh, in, the, uh, in front of you. And uh, we have some uh, uncollectible accounts, and we have to uh, make a motion to write off these taxes. Of course, uh, we've made every effort possible to collect these, exhausted all avenues, and uh, unfortunately, these have to be waived. Um, there's one there for 4409, 9350, and 41087. So it's not a lot of money. Uh, I so move. Moved, seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. Committee is also recommending approval to defer taxes in the amount of 23194 uh, for the roll number listed. And that's in accordance with Council's policy for low income earners. And I so move. Moved, seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. Next, Your Worship, we're recommending approval um, of a request from Steel Communications to place eight 30 second uh, ads um, uh, done by yourself, Your Worship, for the Frosty Festival, welcoming people to the city of Mount Pearl, the Frosty Festival. Set a cost of $624 plus HST. I so move. Moved and seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried, knowing that the mayor abstains from this under conflict. Okay. Yep. But Next. they sound good. I heard them today. They Next one. Good. I haven't heard them yet. No, they I sound good. Today. Yeah? Well, I'm, I'm a tremendous announcer. <laughs> <laughs> Even if I do say so. Even if I do say so myself. <laughs> so they sound good despite, okay, my, okay, despite your involvement, they're still good. They're still Perfect. good. I, might be not as, I'm, I may not be as good as Andrew Ludlow, though. Have you heard uh, Ledwell? Have you heard him on yeah. our frosty oh, chair? 
you heard him on the air in the mornings? Uh, he has he has both a great voice and a great face for radio. Oh my I God, man, he sounds yeah. he sounds uh, he sounds excellent. <laughs> he, could, he could make a he could he could make a nice announcer. Now he doesn't spend as much time on the radio as me or you, Paul. But uh, <laughs> <coughs> moving on. Yeah. Anyway, moving on. Take that one. Item bit. five. Uh, next item, your worship invoice for approval totaling seven hundred thirty-two thousand three hundred eighty-five eighty-nine, oh yeah. and I so move. Moved and seconded. Items listed one through ten. Anything there we need to add? Anything? Anybody need to? The big item there, of course, your worship is uh, over a half million dollars on the uh, Mount Carson upgrading. Well, that's right. Over a half a million of that done already. And, uh, It'll be great when that's done down the spring. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. Uh, moved and seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion carried. Next, your worship committee recommends approval of the updated collection policy, and it is uh, amended to your report. And um, I so move. It's just basically formalizing the way uh, the steps that we take in uh, collecting taxes. I think it's a, uh, a very thorough and very fair approach. So uh, unless any members of council have questions or concerns about it, I'll, I'll move that. It is moved and seconded in the policy the way it goes now or the way it will go. Councillor Lane, you get a collection letter 10 days after your taxes are due. You get a second one if 10 more days goes by, and then you get a third one, and then after that we come with the guns. Is that how it works? After your third notice, then we, uh, we, we can look at other means, including cutting off your water. Including cutting off your water. That one seems to work. Just clarify. A point yeah. of clarification on that, Mr. Worship? Uh, uh, yes. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have your taxes paid within those times. It means that you have to make arrangements. Yes, you have to respond yes. And, yes. and make arrangements for the reality. Yes. Yeah, I mean, that's correct, uh, Your Worship. We have policies uh, currently in place for low-income um, tax, uh, low-income earners where they can uh, uh, pay them off over time with payment plans. Uh, we can defer people's taxes if they're falling upon hard times and so on. So, mm -hmm. yeah, Councillor Tessier is absolutely right. It doesn't mean that once you get the third letter, we're cutting off your water. Uh, if you don't pay them, but it does mean that once you get those letters, you have to make contact to make uh, Arrangement. suitable arrangements. Absolutely. Yeah. We'll call the question and I think in it's a on more than fair process. We'll call the question on acceptance of the new tax collection policy. All those in favor? Okay. Contrary minded, the motion is carried. It should be noted, by the way, though, that our mm -hmm. tax collections in Mount Pearl hover somewhere between 97 and 99 percent, isn't 99. it? 99.79. Is it really? 99.79. Yeah. Is that right? When you put it in that perspective, we have an extraordinary collection. It's very, very successful. We uh, have a secret. People. We have a secret weapon called Allison. <laughs> which, which Michelle doesn't want to mention at all. At all. <laughs> uh, that's good. Ninety-nine point yeah. seven nine percent. I want to tell you that's 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 well up there uh, on collections. Okay, uh, we've called the question. All those in favor? Motion is carried. And uh, next worship, of course. Um, the uh, ATIPA legislation, which uh, came in a couple of years ago, it's a uh, privacy um, act, uh, which obviously is there for a good reason, uh, although some of us may believe it's bureaucracy gone mad to some degree. Uh, but anyway, uh, under this uh, new legislation, we need to establish a couple of positions, uh, if you will. Uh, they're not, we're not hiring new bodies, but we have to assign a couple of our current staff to we have to give them a title, if you will, uh, in order to be able to uh, be in uh, compliance with the ATIPA legislation to be able to provide uh, information under the New Information mm -hmm. Act. So therefore, we are recommending approval for the position. Uh, so for our CAO uh, and our Records Information Management Officer, so our CAO is now also going to be called the head of the public body and access. And, um, no, sorry, head of the public body. And the um, 
Records Management and Information Officer is going to be called the Access and Privacy Coordinator. Mm -hmm. every, so, every municipality. And every municipality has to do this, and you have to give them these titles and so on, and, and then, they, that, then they have the ability then to be able to provide information under the Access to Information Act. Here, here. So this is just a housekeeping thing we have to do to, uh, to make all that happen, so I so move. It has been moved and seconded. Uh, all those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. I think that's, that's it for it. you. We're done. We're up to economic development, communication, and tourism. Councillor Stoyles. I just have one item, and this is uh, back a number of months ago. Uh, actually, <coughs> last year we approved gateway signs. And of course, uh, one of the things when we were looking at when gateway signs are started, the concrete is poured, and we don't have the curve cut down. Uh, to enter the sign, so we're recommending approval. It's got, the estimate is going to be between six and eight hundred dollars per sign, and we have two of them. So we're looking for approval for this to go ahead. It should be pretty much six or seven hundred dollars. It is moved by Councillor Soil, seconded by Councillor Aker. Question or comment? All those in favor? Contrary minded? Motion carried. The sign should be up hopefully by the end of April. Yes, that would be nice to have the new uh, those new gateway signs. Uh, that's all there was for economic development. Yes, it is. We are up to the, the Engineering Services Committee. Councillor Aker. Yes, thank you, Your Worship. First item we have is the uh, results of the call for quotations regarding the Donovan's water meter. This was broken down into two contract packages. CP1 is the Civil Works, and the loan, bi loan bidder is H&B Construction in the amount of $29,831.10, H is to be included. And CP2 uh, was for the electrical, and the bidders you see there, the low bidder was Pentecon Energy Technical Services in the amount of $16,873.61, also HST included. They've been reviewed by our consultants, our engineering staff, they're within budget, and I so move that we approve these, uh, the award of these uh, quotes. Moved by Councillor Aker, seconded by Councillor Stoyles. Any question or comment? Hearing none, we'll call it. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried. The next item, Your Worship, is the uh, contract package two for the Glacier Arena expansion. This is the interior fit up. Uh, we're presenting here today change order number seven in the amount of $24,944.02. Uh, you can see the details. Uh, and this amount is rather quite small, especially on a contract which now uh, has been revised at $7,266,000. And I so move that we approve this change order. Moved, seconded by Councillor Stoyles. Questions, comments? All those in favor? Aye. Contrary minded, motion carried. Next item, Your Worship, Mount Carson Avenue upgrade. This is phase, uh, phase one change order. Um, in the construction work in, in setting up the new road, which will take the corner off Grangeville Avenue, this is the extension of Mount Carson over towards Wyatt, they discovered some uh, fuel oil, I think it was furnace oil, uh, in the ground. So that all had to be remediated. So we're presenting a change order today, change order number one in the amount of 125000 um, which basically revises that contract at about two million thirty-eight, and I so move. Moved, seconded. All those in favor? Okay. Contrary minded. Motion is carried. How big a contaminated area was that? Do we know what was the size of it? It's not that big. It's only about I want to say two thousand square feet long, eight feet wide. Is that right? It was just material that you pay to get treated is expensive. That's what cost the money here. Yeah, no, I'll pass that. I'll pass, I'll that. pass that. But it is, yeah. that's what it's the remnants of the old quarry. Yeah. yeah. Mm. 125 grand. All those in favor? Yeah. Contrary minded, motion is carried. Don't know, we've, we have done it already. Uh, carry on. Yeah, thank you, sir. Uh, the next item is the tender for the supply and installation of a fire alarm system for the uh, Ken Mount Park Community Center. Uh, tenders closed. We had four bidders. The lowest is Barton's Fire Safety Limited in the amount of $9,651.67. And I so move. Move. Seconded by Councillor Stoyles. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion carried. That's it for me on engineering. All right. Well, well, you have to take over for the Deputy Mayor today. Jim Locke not with us, so uh, it will be you and uh, the alternate, of course, is Councillor Tessier. Pleasure to do so. Thank you. The first item is a proposed amendment to the Mount Pearl Building Regulations and adoption of the 2010 National Building uh, Code. Notice of motion was brought forward on February 1st uh, to update the City of Mount Pearl's building regulations to incorporate the recently revised, uh, released I should say, uh, 2010 National Building Code, Plumbing Code, and Fire Code. 
So part of the motion is to move that we adopt them, and the second part of the motion is that further additions to the National Building Code will automatically become part of our mm -hmm. uh, our city as regulations net. And I so move both of those. Moved by Councillor Aker, seconded by Councillor Tessier. Uh, Councillor Lane. Yeah, question, Your Worship. Um, <clears throat> And I guess this could be referred to uh, maybe Mr. Yefchek or to the committee. But uh, as you know, we had an issue raised um, by a resident. I brought it here, I'm going to say, a year or so ago. Um, and what it had to do with is that there was a conflict in the National Building Code in that uh, you are required under the National Building Code to uh, put ear exchangers in all new homes. Mm -hmm. And also, if you do any and new significant modification to existing homes, as was the case in this particular uh, situation, uh, uh, you're required under the Building Code to uh, put in an ear exchanger. And the situation which we had happen, of course, is that there was a gentleman who was forced to put an ear exchanger in and uh, then right next door to him is a person uh, with a chimney who's burning wood um, all the time as his, um, as his main source of heat, if you will. And uh, basically the smoke is coming out of the chimney and being sucked in through the uh, air exchanger and he's, uh, you know, uh, dying there with the smoke. And he ended up having to uh, actually put, place something over the air exchanger, which makes no sense. He's forced to put one in, but then he ends up having to block it off so it's not working because he's sucking in smoke. That was an issue with the billing code and we had uh, written the, um, the organization, I forget what they're called, National whoever, Research Council. National Research Council on that. So now there's an update to the billing code. I'd be shocked if they've changed anything, but I'm just wondering, did they change anything? I can tell you they didn't. No, but they haven't, no. so they're just no. gonna ignore that issue, I guess. No, the procedures, they get lots of requests and they look, evaluate them, but they won't go make one change change to the entire country because of one complaint uh, but they do look at all of them and if they get enough complaints and enough concerns they will warrant a change but no not because of, of one mm. that's not yeah unfortunately I think the situation that you're describing in the end because it was researched uh, as far as we could go with it requires a solution among the neighbors both 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 the man with the air exchanger issue and the man who is using wood as his principal form of heat uh, which he's certainly allowed to do, they need they need to find a solution to that problem jointly. And I don't know what it might be. It'll be it moves water. the air exchanger or does something with his with his chimney to heighten it or I'm not sure, but they we need to do change, something. We can't change these regulations. But we can't change the regulations. Uh, I guess I guess ultimately though it, it creates this problem in this case and I could see it happening in others. Like mm -hmm. he didn't want to put the air exchanger in there. It's just that he had a fire, mm -hmm. and when he redid his house, we forced him to put it in the air exchanger. So yeah. he had to go through the cost to do it, and then he's got a guy right next door with a chimney, and he's sucking in the smoke. Yeah. Which, and we can't, So we can't do anything with the chimney. We can't say you can't burn wood. We can't force the guy to heighten the chimney. We can't force him to do anything with the chimney. But by the same token, we are forcing a guy to have an air exchanger that he didn't want to begin with, yeah. and it's causing a conflict, and it's amazing that... There's nothing that nobody can, like nobody can do anything, but. That's bureaucracy. For that's you. bureaucracy mm -hmm. gone mad once again. There you go. The other point, uh, Your Worship, I just wanted to, uh, to raise here because we're talking about the uh, plumbing codes and everything, which was something I was unaware of until it came to us as another issue, um, I guess. And I don't know how we would inform homeowners of this if they weren't aware, because I certainly wasn't aware. But if somebody gets a new home built in terms of plumbing, all we are saying is that the contractor, the builder, if you will, has to apply for some sort of a permit or, or whatnot from the city to do their own plumbing and certify their own work. And at the end of the day, they submit a letter to us or whatever saying, we have done the plumbing as per mm -hmm. plumbing regulations and so on. Mm -hmm. But of course, we had a concern raised up in the Pearlview area and so on about you know maybe something not necessarily being done properly and there was this whole thought that we had an inspector who would be going out, you know, as new homes are built, going into the homes and inspecting the plumbing. And we, and we do not. And we do not. Mm -hmm. And electrical, I understand, is the same deal same from deal. the province, except that the province looks after that. Yeah. But they don't have inspectors who go in checking the electrical either. Mm -hmm. It's sort of self-certified work, if you will, mm -hmm. which in itself, I think, you know, creates a bit of a conflict of interest in my mind. But those are the regulations. I, 
I, I don't know how we would let people know that, or if we even should let them know it, or if someone was going to get a new house, that it would be up front that they would know that, you know? I, I guess it's not as concerning as you might describe, because all new homes have a home inspector go through, and they typically would check all the drains, so there's numerous opportunities, and the people that go put the plumbing in are licensed professional plumbers, mm. so they do have a license, and they can lose their license, similarly with the electrical, so, and then I guess on top of that, the next level would be you would have a home inspection before you bought the home, so if those conveyors fail, then I'm not certain that a plumbing inspector wouldn't fail as well in those situations, so there are a lot of checks and balances, checks and balances But place, home, so home inspections are not mandatory, right? Yes, they are, if you get, well, if you finance a home, which most people do, so you and most lawyers would recommend it as well if you're right? going to go. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're telling me a guy goes in, he buys a new house, and and he's going to be, because of, through the mortgage, whatever, he's going to be forced on his him. Bank, his bank is going to. His bank is going to say that you have to hire. An inspector. David Foley Home Inspectors is the That's only right. name that comes to mind in the yeah. media all the time, and he comes in and inspects all this stuff. That's, That's right. correct, yeah. Okay. Why did that happen in the case that we had up there, I wonder? It usually does happen. Unless you have continuous 24 hour a day inspection, yeah. then there are no guarantees. Yeah. But okay. the thief will pick up when, some, when someone is blatantly repeating mistakes and insisting. Then they'd the lose their license the in, in theory. The mistake, which I think we're speaking of here, yes. is always there just for attention. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But the bottom line is if anybody thinks that we have an inspector who's going in checking all this stuff out, that is not the case. Mm -hmm. Nor us with plumbing or the province with electrical, right? Correct. Yeah, okay. Anyway, thank you, Your Honor. Call the question. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion is carried. The next item, uh, Your Worship, is a um, we have an application for a development application from Rita Lester on 35 2nd Street, and she wishes to use uh, approximately 18 meter, square meters of her home as a home based business, offering yoga and Pilates consultation sessions to individuals or small groups. Um, uh, the proponent basically offers these classes in the community, and from time to time she likes to offer additional guidance and additional instruction to a select number. Uh, the proponent has stated that uh, the service she is proposing to be offering is by appointment only. There will be a maximum uh, of two, two days per week it'll be, uh, it'll be used. It'll be a maximum of three hours per week between 8 a.m. and 10 a.m., and a maximum of three students per visit. So it doesn't seem like there's gonna, this is going to generate a high volume uh, of traffic. The situate house is located in the residential mixed density um, zone, and according to the, uh, the table and that, uh, basically the city can approve a use such as this, which is an educational use, uh, but it is, very, it is discretionary. And subject to that, we had to go through a public consultation process whereby we went through public notice in the telegram, mm -hmm. notified 113 property and business owners within 150 meters of the proposed business. Uh, we did not receive any commentary or any feedback uh, um, on this uh, notice, and uh, you know, generally speaking, you can conclude from that that uh, basically the, the people in the neighborhood are pretty well okay with it, right? So the motion from committee, uh, we're recommending approval um, of this um, home-based business, subject to, of course, the uh, city's inspector's uh, conditions, uh, also subject to all parking associated with the home-based business, uh, and residential use is to be accommodated off street on site. So therefore we're not going to be piling up any cars in the neighbors, near the neighbors driveways or impeding any traffic going through the uh, through second street. And also uh, another condition is subject to condition six of the uh, residential mixed uh, development uh, density, I should say, land use zone table, which really refers to the educational use of this particular uh, business. And I so move. Moved, seconded. Question or comment? Yeah. Councillor Lane? I hate to keep getting up, but i gotta, I got to ask, though. Um, in terms of these, um, um, I guess, conditions that we have here, so that we're all clear on this, is that, um, you know, I think when we looked at home-based businesses, originally at least, I think the thought was always more about somebody who had an office, you know, like it was a real estate person or whatever who was just using a portion of their house for an office. And since then, we've started, you know, and I'm not saying it's all bad, by the way, but we've started getting into other types of uses, um, and this is one of them. Uh, obviously, if the neighbors don't have a problem with it, then in general, I don't have a problem with it. 
But the only question I would have, or just confirmation I would like, is that let's say if in three months or six months' time we find that there is an inordinate amount of traffic, more than what was um, recommended or said it would be, that instead of it operating for a couple of hours, two days a week, now they're at it every day of the week and so on, do we have the ability under what we are currently approving that we can just yank that permit and then they're done? Or are we locked in for a certain period of time or whatever? Locked in for a year. So I if if yeah. if you if you if you end up in a if you end up with a big battle and they you're they're saying we're not violating the the permit and and <coughs> you're saying yes you are mm -hmm. you're going to be in a challenge the permit though as I understand it is for one year. Okay, I'm, I, not I, saying, I, I, I'm not I, saying I'm not saying that you can't revoke it. I would like I would like your worship confirmation. I like I would like confirmation on exactly what that is, if it is for a year or if it's longer. I, and I would also like confirmation that we do have the ability that, because you know what it's like, a lot of times someone will say, in order to get it approved, it's like, you know, you meet with the planning department and they say, well, you know, if you were going to allow this to go for every day of the week, we couldn't approve it. But if it was only for two days a week or so many hours, we probably works. could. I, I, I understand, no, I'm not saying that, no, I'll, I'll, the point I'm making is, Somebody can present a pitch, paint a picture that seems pretty benign. As we know, it's not the first time that's happened, and mm -hmm. then things change over time. So all I'm, all, I'm, all I'm wondering is, if it were to change, which I'm not saying it's going to be the case here, it may be perfectly fine. Like I said, I don't even have a problem with it if their neighbors don't. But if it should change, do we then have the ability to go in as a council and say, this is not what was agreed to, so therefore we're pulling your permit. That's the all answer I to that, know. The answer to that is yes. If they are blatantly in violation of the agreed permit, the, the answer that we can pull it is yes. Perfect. The other question, which was, I thought, uh, explained at a, at a committee meeting, is that this permit's for one year. Uh, if I could just respond to that. I don't Councillor think, Walsh, can you yeah, clarify? Well, you know, I, I think I can, but uh, I... I no permit is actually issued for a year. It's, if you get a permit, oh, actually, actually, we do issue. We we can we, and have. We do and have conditional and permits, I but and I understood this was one. Okay. Well, again, my understanding is different. But okay. We when we issue a permit, we issue a permit for the for the home based business. Mm -hmm. uh, they do pay for the home based business on an annual basis. Yes. Uh, but there are no conditions unless it's restricted in the and I don't see it here. It, no, 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 I don't see it here either. I have and to I don't think it would be normally. So. This one here, we already discussed. There's no problem with it. The business meets the regulations. It was recommended out of committee for approval. We approved it. We discussed it. <clears throat> Not a problem. I don't think that this has any other restrictions other than any other home-based business. And my understanding is that, and I have a home-based business, it's not approved for one year. It's approved until I want to stop, uh, you know, uh, the business uh, operating in my home. The, the, the fact of the matter is we get... We pay our taxes on an annual basis or semi-annual basis for the home-based business, uh, but as long as they're complying with the regulations under which the the uh, uh, the approval was given, I don't think it'll be an issue. But to your question, Councillor Lane, if we have a complaint, and our inspector is no different than any other complaint, if our inspectors investigate this and find that they're not complying with conditions under which the home-based business was approved, we could move in at any time. And at any time and and that. It's not a problem, and it's not because it's only for a year. It's any, any home-based business that's violating the conditions of the operation of the business, we can rescind the license, and uh, that can be done at any time. It's usually done on the basis of a complaint. Uh, you know, you get complaints from the neighbors Sorry. that they're not... You know, they're not respecting. This is not a two-day uh, a week a thing, and it's not three people. But they're very, very rare. Uh, the ones that we get complaints on are usually legitimate. They're usually fairly problematic. And they're usually a business that began as a small home-based business but grew to be something much bigger and now really should be operating uh, as something other than a home-based business. So I don't think this one is any different. And if you read the conditions that apply to this one, it doesn't say specifically for a year or 12 uh, months. I, did, I did think it was, but, but yeah. I thought we discussed it, but that's fine. Yeah. Councillor Tessier? I think where the one-year time frame is coming into play, <coughs> if somebody applies for a permit, and again, this is my understanding, if somebody applies for a permit for a home-based business or for anything like that, 
they have a year to implement it. If after a year they have not done it, they would need to reapply. No, no, no. no yes, I understand. I, yes, that's true. Conditional permits, we've given out many of them. Yes, we have. Over the years that give people an opportunity for a year. We'll, we'll give you a year and then we're going to review. That's right. And you prescribe the specific conditions. My understanding is that that's what we were doing on this particular application. We are not. I have no problem with the application anyway, but uh, uh, that's not listed. But I did think it was, but I'll and take that back. Well, Your Worship, if, if it's not, um, let me, again, just to do our due diligence, and again, it's got nothing to do with this particular project. I think we should do it for all of them that come up this way. We need to do that. Well, do you that. know, it's fine. It's fine. It, well, Your Worship, it's fine for Councillor Walter or anyone else to say there's no need to do it. Need to do but, it. But, 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 but the fact of the matter is that we're approving it on the premise that it's going to be operating two days a week for two hours. That's the premise of which I'm approving it. If the premise is that the background information says that, but after it's approved, it could be five days a week and it's not listed in the conditions. So in other words, at some point in time, you haul the permit and it says to operate Pilates or whatever it is. It and it doesn't say, anyway. no, hold on now. And it doesn't say two days a week and you're doing it seven days a week. Well, then can we, can, then can we pull the permit if it's not listed there? Well, uh, does it say it on the, it does. the does it say it on the conditions, or is that simply background information? Because I don't see a condition that says you shall only operate two days a week from eight to whatever it is. I don't see that written there. If it was written there, I'm fine with it. But if it's not written there, and it's simply background information, which is the basis for our decision, but then a year from now someone pulls it and there's nothing on it to say that, then that's a problem. In my mind, I, I don't know. Am, am I dreaming? Am I missing if something? You're dreaming, and that if I must be dreaming. Problem, we're going to hear about it, and uh, then we'll take action. But, but we worship, can't take action if it's not written there. Your Worship, in, in the recommendation, which really forms the basis for the motion, before it gets into the three conditions, it refers to a maximum of two days per week, a maximum of three hours per week between eight and ten a.m. Eight and ten a.m., and a maximum of three students per visit. That will form the basis for the approval of the application. Right, so that will go out. So if that gets violated, the proponent will be in violation of that, and basically it will be rescinded. Mm -hmm. Perfect. And if it's right. in that if forms it's part it's of the, the approval. Perfect. No, I have an issue with it. If, if it's in the conditions, perfect. But if it's not in the conditions, that's all I'm asking. Is it in the conditions, or is it just in our package today? But the condition, if you haul the permit tomorrow, wouldn't be there. That's all I'm asking. I'm moving the recommendation, and it is included in the recommendation. Okay. Yeah. Perfect. It's there. It's perfect. And I so move. Moves. Seconded. Any other question or comment? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Reminded, Aye. Motion carried. Uh, the next item, Your Worship, is the development permit list. You can see permits six and seven there, and I so move. Move the development list. All those in favor? Contrary minded, motion carried. Building construction residential for the period. How are we doing? Oh, sorry. Two more items, and we're, we're, we're almost there. No, I'm looking for money. <laughs> How are we doing on money? How are we doing on money? Yeah. Oh, that's coming up on the next page. That's, that's what I thought you've gone to. Oh. Okay, sorry. Yeah, we're on the same page now, right? <laughs> yes, you were moving building construction, residential, yes, commercial. I wanted to move. And uh, I was saying, how are we doing? Nine hundred and sixty-five thousand dollars for the period, uh, January fifteenth to February third, which will bring the total for the year to two million nine hundred and two million nine hundred sixty-three thousand nine hundred dollars. And I so moved. Moved, seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Motion is carried. And on the commercial side, for the same period, we've got uh, six hundred and four thousand one hundred dollars, uh, which brings the year to date to eight hundred and thirty three thousand nine hundred and twenty dollars. And I so move. Move, seconded. All those in favor? Contrary minded. Carried. And that's it, Your Worship. Thank you. And that is it for that committee. Uh, we are up to new business, Councillor Tessier. Thank you, Your Worship. Um, I'm sure that all of Council will. Of course, of Frosty, and of course, Councillor Walsh will, I'm sure, uh, as Chair of Community Services. But uh, we all have been to several events so far, and it's been a wonderful success. Um, I must say, Sunday's weather hampered some of the events, but again, we're resilient people in the winter, uh, so that's all part and parcel. So I wanted to congratulate the committee on a good job so far with Frosty, and I'm looking forward to the rest of the events. Here, here. Uh, also, uh, we were talking earlier about our animals and, and impound fees and all that stuff. Right now, we have had, an, uh, we've had uh, an awful lot of snow in a very short period of time, and we're expecting more. And of course, with high winds, with a lot of snow comes snow drifting. And if you are like my family, and you open your door to let your dog go out in the backyard to take care of his business, if he does that, he comes back to the door if you're fenced in, and, and that's the end of it. However, now I've noticed in my backyard, the snow has drifted up over the fence. 
and that's probably going to be the case in a lot of places. And I know last year there was an incident where a dog actually got out mm -hmm. uh, of, of a yard because of that situation and actually lost its life, if I, if I recall correctly. So I just want to send out a reminder to the residents as well that if the snow has drifted up over your back fence, you know, certainly take measures to make sure that your animals are protected, uh, that they don't wander free, that they're not able to get out, uh, escape their backyard, because that is a real concern, especially in the winter and when we have cold nights and, and definitely nasty weather. So again, just a reminder to the residents to keep an eye on their dogs in this kind of weather and to make sure that uh, their dogs don't have escape routes in their backyards because... Cats too. Cats as well. Cats are cats are, cats are supposed crafty, to be leashed. Right? People don't realize it. But cat, cats to be are a little leashed. more crafty. They can jump a fence, right? Dog, not so much. Mm -hmm. That's why they're supposed to be on a leash. Cats. Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. You don't see it. But anyway, that's it. It's just a reminder to the residents to be mindful of their animals. Thank you. Councillor Lane. No, nothing more, sir. Uh, Councillor Stoyles. Yes, I have a couple of questions, Your Worship. Uh, today I attended uh, the Red Cross uh, press conference where they uh, announced that they're building a uh, adding on to a new building. Mm -hmm. They're in the process of raising $2 million. They have $1.5 million already raised, and they're going to be looking for some new volunteers, and they had a, a great campaign. I know they thanked all the municipalities and that, and of course, uh, uh, today, and of course, I was down representing the city. I do have a picture and that of the new building that they're going to be doing, and they have some big sponsors on board. Um, they're going to call the new center the Hibernia uh, center because the Hibernia is giving them a load of money, uh, I think six hundred thousand dollars, mm. and uh, it was a great press conference day, and I certainly was delighted to be there to represent the city. Excellent. Also, last week I attended the police office of the year, mm -hmm. and I have the names of the two RNC and uh, RCMP uh, police officers that uh, won, and I'm assuming you, I don't know if you already have sent a letter to them. I don't uh, think so. But have we won a note? Certainly would like do. Uh, we'll do that. So uh, the, the their RCMP, of course, which is in this region, of course, Patrick Roach uh, was the police officer, the RNC officer that one, but I'm assuming he mm -hmm. will send the vote of the, the police. Anyway, uh, also the Sports Hall of Fame was on uh, last week, and I'm, I'm, I think almost all the council attended, and just wanted to say heads off to the Sports Alliance and a great job, and congratulations to the new two inductees. And there are letters gone to them. There, I assume there was. Yes. And that's it, Your Worship. All right, thank you. Councillor Walsh. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, just uh, picking up from where uh, Councillor Tessier left off, we have certainly are in the midst of a, another very successful Frosty Festival. Uh, the attendance at our events, and particularly the opening gala this year, it was extremely well attended. I, I don't think that I've ever seen uh, a bigger crowd in the glacier, uh, including for hockey games, because we had an extra four, four and fifty, five hundred people on the floor that you you can't have for events like hockey games. So extremely well attended. Uh, we ran into a little bit of a weather challenge on uh, Sunday, which canceled some events. They're uh, attempting to reschedule them now. I would imagine that the the big one, the the actual uh, Irish pub night, will probably take place this coming Sunday evening at the Knights of Columbus. Um, it's Monday, and what I heard, I'm yep, on. could be. Yeah, the uh, children's Christmas parties. Oh, it was. Ready for me next Sunday, so. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks for that information. The uh, dinner theater is on tonight. Your worship is going, regardless of the weather, of course, because of the nature of that uh, if that event, and that looks to be a another fabulous uh, night tonight as well. So, if you haven't taken in some of the events, uh, just encourage people to get out, participate. There are a lot of events, and there are events for people of all ages and interests uh, in the city. Second thing I wanted to mention, um, I know that uh, Councillor Lane has mentioned on a number of occasions about the skidoos. Um, I haven't really honestly seen very much operation, and I live uh, in the area where there, there's usually an abuse uh, right behind Admiralty Wood, uh, Westminster. But I did see uh, uh, skidoos crossing the highway, and I tell you, it's... It, it sends shivers through my body when you see them going across, uh, you know, four lanes uh, of highway. And it's hard to tell, if, but it, they look like they were younger people because like, mm -hmm. they have, they're all dressed up and they have helmets on, which is a good thing. But it looked like they were younger kids, maybe 14, 15 years old, crossing the highway. Uh, and uh, it, it's really dangerous, you know, uh, when mm -hmm. you're crossing like that. Obviously, if they're crossing the highway, they are clearly using, this was just east of where Donovan's, 
uh, so they were coming up with the area there to go across. Uh, the other one up the tree, was that? No, not out of a tree. That's no, only that's only that's Councilor Stoyles does that. Uh, but but seriously, it's really dangerous activity. And of course, if they're coming across the highway, they had to be operating uh, the snow machine in in Mount Pearl, which is but yeah, which is really not not uh, legal. Last thing I'd like to to do is just mention. Uh, all of the various winners for the sports awards are listed on the uh, Sport Alliance website. I was in there today and checked those. But I wanted to acknowledge in particular the two Hall of Famers, Bob Wood uh, and Charlie Adams, who were inducted. Uh, they were very, very deserving winners, very great so. uh, contributors to our community, particularly to the sport uh, and young people in our community, and very, very deserving. And on a, a little bit of a sadder note, Someone who has been involved very much in, in uh, soccer in this uh, community, the whole family actually, the Jameson family. Unfortunately, Bill Jameson passed away. Uh, he had been ill for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, his lung collapsed, I think, on Saturday. And unfortunately, he succumbed uh, to his illness on Sunday afternoon. Uh, they have four beautiful children. They've been very involved in sport, recreation, and community development in Mount Pearl. Um, I don't have the details of the funeral, but I, I, I know that uh, the council would like to know about it, and they have a very large circle of friends and, and supporters uh, in this community, and we're very, very saddened by the loss of uh, Bill Jameson. Absolutely. Thanks very much. Thank you for that. Uh, Councilor Aker? No, I also am saddened by something that you have. Nothing to add? Uh, we, will, we will entertain a motion to adjourn. Uh, moved, and we are adjourned. Thank you. What? Yeah. It, it hardly seems fair. <laughs>